What have you got to be merry about? You're poor enough. Oh, come then, what right do you have to be dismal? What reason do you have to be morose? You're rich enough. Bah, humbug. Don't be cross, auntie. Nephew, uh, keep your Christmas in your way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it? But you don't keep it. Well, let me leave it then. And much good it may do you, much good it's ever done you. There are many things from which I might have dragged good, by which I have not profited. I've always thought Christmas, when it comes around, as a good time. A kind, charitable, forgiving, pleasant time. The only time that I'm aware of in the long calendar of the year, where men and women, seeming by one consent, open their shut-up hearts freely, and view those beneath them as if they really were fellow passengers to the grave, and not some other race of creatures bound on other journeys. So therefore, auntie, though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I say that it has done me good, and will do me good, and I say, God bless it! Oh, hear, hear! Let me hear another word from you, and you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. You're quite the speaker, sir. It's a wonder you don't go into Parliament. Don't be angry, auntie. Come, dine with us tomorrow. No, I won't dine with you. What did you get married for, anyway? Because I fell in love. Because you fell in love. Good afternoon. You never came to see me before I was married. Pray don't use that as a reason not to now. Good afternoon. I'm sorry with all my heart to find you so resolute. We've never had any quarrel to which I have been a party. I see I've taken quite a risk in coming in homage to Christmas. And I shall keep my Christmas humor to the last. So, a Merry Christmas, Aunt Edwina. Good afternoon. And a Happy <coughs> New Year. Good afternoon. Merry Christmas, Bob. Merry Christmas, Master Fred. <laughs> Mysteries of life aren't always evident at first, but it's really not that bad. So many have it worse. I try to be of charity in spite of how she acts, and I try to see the good in her instead of all she obviously lacks. another fellow, my clerk, 15 shillings a week, and a wife, and a family, talking about a Merry Christmas. Those two live in a world of fools. This is like living in a lunatic asylum. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes. we the pleasure of addressing a A very cold morning, madam. Indeed, as cold in here as it is outdoors. Uh, perhaps a lump of coal would favor me. What do you want? Have I the pleasure of addressing Scrooge? Or Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. He died seven years ago tonight. Uh, we have no doubt that his generosity is well represented by his surviving partner at this festive season of the year, Madam Scrooge. It is more than usually desirable that we set aside some funds for the poor and destitute who suffer greatly at the present time. Are there no prisons? Uh, plenty of prisons. <clears throat> and the orphanages are in operation? Uh, they are still. I wish I could say they were not. And the workhouses and the hospitals are in full vigor then? Both are very busy, ma'am. I thought from what you said earlier, I was afraid that something had occurred to stop them in their useful course. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. But, madam, under the impression that they scarcely furnish Christian cheer of mind or body to the multitude, a few of us are endeavoring to raise some funds to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. We choose this time because it is a time above all others 
when want is keen felt and abundance rejoices. What shall we put you down for? Nothing. You wish to be enough? I wish to be left alone. Since you ask me what I wish, ladies, that is my answer. I don't make merry myself at Christmas. I can't afford to make the people merry. I help to establish, to support those establishments already mentioned, and they cost enough. And those who are badly off must go there. Many can't go there, and many would rather die. Well, if they would rather die, then they'd better do so, and decrease the surplus population. Oh. <laughs> Besides, I don't know what happens to people. But you might take an interest. Well, it's not my business. It's enough for a person to understand their own business without interfering with other people's. Mine occupies me constantly. Good afternoon, ladies. You, stop your daydreaming. Get back to work. Once a promising apprentice, ambitious without fear, now I sit and wonder, how did I end up here? Provider for my family, the bacon, rent, and clothes, but here I stay. What seems like forever, and it may well be I. So
Oh, I know the face. Could it be Marley's ghost? The same face, the very same. How is that you? And what do you want with me? Not every unscrew. Oh, perhaps my eyes fail me. Who are you? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. In me? No, I don't. Why do you doubt your senses? Well, because little things affect them. You, you, a slight disorder of the stomach makes them cheat. You could, uh, you could be a, a, a bit of undigested beef, a blob of mustard, a crumb of cheese, a, a fragment of underdone potato. Oh. <laughs> Why do you trouble me? Ye of worldly mind, do you believe in me or not? But I do, I do, I, I must. But, but why does your spirit walk the earth and why does it come to me? Each of us has a task to use our spirits to do some good. If we do not go forth this way in life, we are condemned to do so after death. You, you are restrained by chains. Tell me why. I, I wear the chains I forged in life. I made them link by link and yard by yard out of my own free will and throughout my life I twisted and welded myself in chains of lies and anger link by link feeding only my greed out of my own free will I chose to fear rather than to love is my fate strange to you? Or would you know the length and weight of the strong chains you bear yourself? Oh, and we to take warning! Well, you were always a good man in business, Jacob. Business or business. Humankind was my business. The dealings of my trade were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, and benevolence were my true business. Hear me, my time is nearly gone. I have come here tonight to warn you that you may yet have a chance and hope of escaping my fate. A chance and hope of helping you, Edwina. Well, you were always a good friend to me. Thank you, Jacob. You will be haunted by three spirits. Will it bring me the chance and hope you mentioned, Jacob? Yes. Well, I think I would rather not. Uh, <laughs> without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Es expect the first when the bell tolls one. Couldn't I take them all at once and get it over, Jacob? Expect the second on the next. Expect the third on the next. Look to me no more, and look for your own sake, that you remember what has passed between us this night. Spirit, child, whose coming was foretold. 
told to me? I know. Well, who and what are you? I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Come with me. Oh, I'm mortal. I cannot fly or walk through walls. Where would you have me go? Bear with a touch of my hand there, and you shall be free of time and mortality. I was, I was bred in this place. I was a girl here. Your lip is trembling. And what is that upon your cheek? No, I, I'm just a bit taken off guard. Leave me where you would, spirit. Don't you recollect the way? Oh, remember as I can walk it blindfold. Then lead the way. These are the shadows of the things that have been. These merrymakers have no consciousness of us. And look, the school is not quite deserted. A solitary child remains reading. Edwina, Edwina, fall like a hyena. <laughs> the girl has no friends. Her happiness is only in fantasies found within those pages. I know it, I know it, she is the or forgotten self I used to be. Oh, Alibaba! Oh, it's dear, honest Alibaba! I know it from the book my girl self is reading. One Christmas time when yonder solitary child was left all alone here, he did come just like that. I come from the buried treasures of your imagination. Always remember, child, Whatever you can imagine yourself to be, it can be so. Look at me! I am Alibaba. <coughs> and I am very good. <laughs> always a delicate creature, whom a breath may have withered, and she had a large heart. <laughs> so she had, you are right, and I will not contradict it, God forbid. <coughs> she died a woman, and had children, I think? Yes, one child. <coughs> ah, yes, your nephew Fred. Yes. What is it? Oh, it's nothing. Uh, th 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 there were some children begging. Uh, at my door when I went to close my offices, I, I, I wish I had given them something is all. Perhaps there is hope for this woman. She seems to be learning from her past. Let us see another Christmas.
small man, and a small matter to make these silly folks so full of gratitude. Small? Why is it not? He has spent but only a few pounds of your mortal money to celebrate. He's had so much that he deserves his praise. Oh, it's not that, it's not that. It's a, he had the power in his employment to make us happy, or unhappy, to make our, our burden and our service a light, or, or burdensome, a, a pleasure, or a toil. The, the, the happiness he chose to give us was quite as great as if it had cost a fortune. What is the matter? Oh, it's nothing in particular. Something, I think. Well, it's just that I, I should like to have a, a word or two with Ratchet, my clerk, just now is all. My time goes short, quickly. It matters little. To you, very little. Your idol, it's displaced me. And if it can't cheer and comfort you in time to come, as I would have tried to do, I have not only cause to grief, but fear for you. What idol is this place? A golden you? one. Your love for money. Bill. Bill, oh, wait! <laughs>
Ten minutes, a quarter of an hour went by, yet nothing came. At last she began to think that the source of this ghostly light might be in the adjoining room, from whence it seemed to shine. This idea of taking full possession of her mind, she turned softly and shuffled to the door. The moment Scrooge's hand was on the lock, a strange voice called to her by her name and bade her to enter. She obeyed. And we are... <laughs> and we
Well, never mind. So long as you're come, now sit down and have a rest. Lord, bless you. No more this father coming. I want to hide. Giddy up, giddy up. Merry Christmas all. <laughs> Why, where's Martha? Oh, not coming. Not coming? Not coming on Christmas? Oh, father, here's father, here I am. <laughs> and father will just behave. Oh, as good as gold and better. Somehow she gets all thoughtful sitting by herself for so long and thinks the strangest things you, you, you ever heard. She told me, uh, coming home, that she hopes that the, the people saw her in the church because she was a cripple, and it might be pleasant for them to remember upon Christmas Day who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Ah, Tessa's growing strong and hearty. So here we are, another Christmas. Hey, hey you know what make beggars walk and blind men see? Nay, that is my father's business. <laughs> but I saw you, Mr. What you saw was a dusting of peace and goodwill. Some things can't be changed. But then again, some things can be rectified. Tis a glorious pigeon our Peter bag for us this very morning. Tis humble, but it be fresh. Well, to be sure, the proof of a man's wealth is not on the side of the bird. Is that all they have to eat? Oh, I, I, I cannot bear to watch this. Stay and behold, Edwina, there is more to what you witness. Oh, it pains me to look. A woman's courage sometimes lies in her generosity of presence.
The child will die. Oh no, kind spirit, say she will be spared. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, none other of my race will find her here. What then? If she be like to die, she had better do it and decrease the surplus population. <laughs> do I hear my own words? Damn the innocent? Well, a merry cheer to all and to Madame Scrooge. I give you Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed. Why, I wish I had her here. I'd give her a piece of my mind to feast upon, and I hope she'd have a good appetite for it, too. Oh, my dear, the children. Christmas Day. Yes, it should be our Christmas Day. Of that, I have no doubt. But a day upon which we drink to the health of such an odious, stingy, hard, and unfeeling woman as Edwina Scrooge. You know it to be true, Robert. No one knows it better than you, dear man. Oh, my dear, what better a day than on Christmas Day? Very well. I shall drink to her health for your sake and for the day's, but not for hers. All right. Long life to her, a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. She'll be very merry and very happy of that, I have no doubt. <laughs> Ignorance. 
Pay attention, woman, for what you lack in yourself and envy in others may turn your steps from dancing to stumbling into your own ignorance and greed. I am a woman of feelings. Surely there speaks within me a seed of tenderness and love. It is not enough to spend a lifetime sleeping, Edwina. Behold!
was so cold in death that one has to wonder if she were not that cold in life. Oh, I cared for, uh, I'm, I'm caring, perhaps, alone. Oh, 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 spare it if there's any person in this, in this town who feels emotion caused by that woman's death. You, spirit, show me that person. I beseech you. Yes, the lovely Cratchit family ought to see them again with him. Warm comfort. But alas, what is it you show me now? I, I wish you could have gone. It would have done you good to see how green a place your resting place is. But you'll see it often. I promised her that I would walk there on a Sunday. My little girl. My dear, dear child.
I am here. And I feel happy. <laughs> the shadows of the things that would have been may be dispelled. They will be. I am a, I'm a changed woman. Oh, I, I don't know what day of the, of the month it is. I, I, don't, I don't know how long I've been with the spirits. I don't know anything. I'm quite a baby. Oh, never mind, I don't care. I'd rather be a baby. Hello out there! Hello! My fine fellow, what day is it today? It's Christmas Day. Oh, of course it is! Intelligent fellow! Delightful fellow! Here, take this and go and buy that prize turkey that hangs in yonder butcher's window. And, oh, <laughs> take it to Bob Cratchit's. It's, it's twice as big as Tiny Tess. <laughs> Don't tell him who sent it. And take a shilling. No, two shillings for you, my fine fellow. Oh, oh, oh. oh I love this place. I love these people. Oh, I shall love this all the rest of my life. <laughs> now, <laughs> as you can see, Scrooge was a changed woman. She went to church and she walked about the streets watched the people hurrying to and fro, patted children on the head, questioned beggars, looked down into the kitchens of houses and up at the windows and found everything could yield her pleasure. She dressed herself all in her best. The people by this time, pouring forth as she had seen them with the ghost of Christmas present, and walking with her hands behind her, Scrooge regarded everyone with a delighted smile. She looked so irresistibly pleasant in a word that three or four good-humored fellows said, Good morning, madam, a Merry Christmas to you. And Scrooge said often afterwards that of all the blithe sounds she had ever heard, those were the blithest her ears. She had not gone far when coming towards her, she beheld the collectors who had come to her office the day before. It sent a pang across her heart to think how these ladies would look upon her when they met. She knew what path lay straight before her, and she took it. My dear ladies, she said, do you do? I hope you succeeded yesterday. It was very kind of you. And will you have the goodness to hear Scrooge whispered in her ear. Lord bless me, my dear Madam Scrooge, are you serious? Mm -hmm. If you please, said Scrooge, not a farthing less. And then, in the afternoon, she turned her steps toward her friend, nephew Fred's house. Fred! Why, bless my soul, who's this? Oh, no, Fred, it is I, your aunt and queen. Come to bring you Christmas joy. And, and look, I brought, I've come. Oh, Fred, it is so good to be alive, my dear boy. I, I, I come, I come with, I've got gifts for everybody. Wonderful, wonderful gifts. Yes. <laughs> I see you so close, very much, and it's gifts enough for me. Indeed, this is a day of miracles. Ratchet! What are you doing? Why aren't you at work? Oh, my just kidding, old man. <laughs> Call this not a gift, but something I have long overdue you. I will help your struggling family, and, and I will give you a raise. 
I don't say nothing. We'll talk about it later. Now, hear none of that. You and I have been cold enough. Buy another cold stuff before you dot another eyeball <laughs> cratchit. And you, my sweet child, you will grow up to be stronger and wiser than myself, I promise you. Oh, Merry Christmas and God bless you. Bless you.